Hey guys, welcome back to another Astro 310 video. In today's video, we will be discussing space history. We have two objectives. The first is to know the two traditions of thought established by Aristotle and Ptolemy that dominated astronomy into the 1600s. And the second will be to know the contributions to astronomy made by prominent philosopher scientists, namely Copernicus, Brahe, Galileo, and Newton. So long before uh, rockets and interplanetary probes were able to escape Earth's atmosphere, people explored the heavens with their eyes and with their imaginations. Such was the case for Aristotle. Aristotle believed that the Earth was the center of the universe and developed what we would call now uh, a geocentric model of the universe. He also believed that the moon, sun, and five known observable planets must be carried on crystalline spheres. He further divided up his geocentric universe into superlunar and sublunar regimes, with heavenly perfection existing in the superlunar regime. And kind of going along with this idea of heavenly perfection, he theorized that the orbits must be circular, since circles are the perfect geometric shape. The next person to come along and add something to Aristotle's beliefs uh, was that of Ptolemy. And Ptolemy um, actually observed that the planets didn't progress in a uniform manner across the night sky, but at times would seem to progress backwards. So to better describe this, he developed what he would call epicycles. So epicycles were essentially a circle within a circle, which you can see here, with the Earth at the center. So uh, Ptolemy agreed with Aristotle's belief that the Earth was the center of the universe and that the five um, known planets and the moon and the sun were carried on these crystalline spheres. Also that these orbits must be circular, but these epicycles were better able to describe this backwards motion of the planets across the night sky. And these ideas actually dominated astronomy for another 13 centuries. So really no changes happened until uh, Copernicus came along. And when Copernicus came along, he agreed with Aristotle and Ptolemy that the orbits must be circular, but he theorized that the planets could be rotating around the sun rather than around the earth and developed what we would call now a heliocentric model or a sun-centric model of uh, the universe. With this, you have to have a rotation of the Earth to be able to describe this kind of wandering idea of the planets, which you'll see again here. So you've got the sun at the center now and the Earth going around. You've got another planet, presumably Mars, out here, where you can see this kind of retrograde or backwards seeming motion. However, his ideas that the, um, you know, all the planets rotate around the sun and not around the Earth were very radical for the time. In fact, the next explorer that we'll talk about, Brahe, actually believed that, um, that Copernicus was incorrect, that um, this, this geocentric model of the universe was actually that, that was true, um, and that the sun and the moon must rotate around the Earth, but all other planets must rotate around the sun, which would explain some of the phenomenologies that we would um, see today. However, he did observe changes in the superlunar realm, which started to chip away at this idea of superlunar heavenly perfection. Um, he also made a tremendous contribution, perhaps his best contribution, was that of very precise measurements of the heavens using a sextant. So these measurements were later used by Kepler, which we'll discuss in more detail in class, so I'll leave that for a later date. The next explorer that we'll talk about is Galileo. And Galileo was actually the first astronomer that we know to use a telescope. Um, and what he discovered with this was that the moon was um, not uniformly you know, flat, but had mountains and valleys, um, that the sun had blemishes on it, sunspots. He actually discovered moons around Jupiter. So to this date, those moons are called the Galilean moons. He also theorized that light and heavy objects would fall at the same rate, which we now know to be true. Um, lastly, we'll talk about Newton. So Sir Isaac Newton had a miracle year in 1665. That's the year that he invented calculus, uh, came up with the idea of the universal law of gravitation, and developed the first reflective telescope. So all three uh, very significant contributions to astronomy. Uh, the universal law of gravitation um, we'll talk about in more detail in class, but was universal in the fact that it united the idea that you know an apple falling from the tree uh, is governed by the same principles that these planets that would be moving around the sun uh, were, which was very revolutionary for the time and still today. Um, and so in 1667, he actually came up with his laws of motion, which you've seen in other classes, so I'm not going to go in tremendous detail here, but we've listed them here. So the first law was that every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it's compelled to change um, that state by forces impressed upon it. And the second is that forces must be, or force is equal to the change in momentum for change in time. And the third is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So these uh, ideas and these laws of motion 
ocean had significant uh, effects and, and reverberations throughout the uh, throughout the astro uh, astronomical community. So I hope you've learned a couple things today um, that you remember that there's traditions established by Aristotle and Ptolemy that dominated for almost 2,000 years and that there's significant contributions to astronomy by uh, namely Copernicus, Brahe, Galileo, and Newton. You're able to name some of those things. Thanks and we'll see you next time.